I guess the simple answer to that question is anything but what it is right now. Uh, we recently heard President Biden saying that they are uh, trying to collaborate with the Taliban. Uh, I do not know how they justify that. How I do not know how they want to collaborate with, again, savages, monsters, don't know anything, no education, no real life whatsoever, and who uh, will do anything to prevent uh, any right to prevent women being given any rights at all, and not just women, again, human rights in general. Uh, unfortunately, it's not just the women right now, the men who don't agree with their ideologies are in the same target. Um, so again, it's I do not know how they want to achieve that collaboration. And they're in a way, I feel like they're trying to normalize the situation in Afghanistan. And that's very saddening to see because, again, they claim to be uh, the bringer of justice or human rights, women's rights, children's rights, whatever, whatever. They claim to be all of this. But we're seeing the United States government being anything but that. We're seeing them doing any, being completely ignorant to millions of lives just so they can benefit themselves in a way. We're seeing them being not caring about anything else in the world, but what would only support them right here, which is very saddening. And I think what the United States policy should be right now is instead of collaborating with the Taliban, collaborating with groups that are fighting against the Taliban, collaborating with the thousands of women who are on strike every day in the streets of Afghanistan, even when they have a gun into their face, Collaborating with them because they have a fight in them. My, pe I know, I believe that in my people, in my, our blood, we have this freedom inside of us, and that this freedom will never burn out. That no matter how many lives are lost, no matter how much sacrifice we have to give, we will get our freedom back. The only thing that we're asking of the world is a little bit of support, because right now the U.S. is trying to get everyone out, but they don't realize that getting 36 million people out is not possible. They have to find a solution inside so we can fix everything inside. And the only way we can do that is if we don't have the Taliban anymore. We're not telling them to fight our war. We're just telling them to bring awareness and support us in our war. That's it. Engage, engage, engage. Engage the Taliban and other Afghans and support Afghan livelihoods, which is not the same as supporting the Taliban. Change only happens when we work on it, not when we abandon a problem. Stop cutting aid, focus on the economy, and help build stability. Don't forget Afghanistan. We abandoned it after the Soviet war during the Taliban regime the first time around. Don't repeat the mistakes which have consequences for world security, but also for Afghan lives with hunger and desperation, with women's issues, especially women's lives of vulnerable people. And it also leads to more people leaving the country, uh, heading west in search of a better life. I think it's very clear the US has to understand that you cannot bring in the same people who made the problem in the first place. Um, I mean, the past two decades are a good example is, yes, we did have a constitution and I'm so proud of it that we did have that. Um, but at the same time, these were the people who were warlords, people who were ma running mafia gangs, people who were okay with running drug cartels. And these were the poster boys and girls for the U.S. policy in Afghanistan. These were the people who were okay with abusing human rights as long as they were in power and were doing it under the um, this sheet of democracy. I think the U.S. has to change that or challenge that if their intentions with Afghanistan are clear and nice. If not, then of course they are going to employ the same corrupt people and recycle uh, leaders every two decades. And they, that's what they've been doing for the past four decades anyways. Um, so the first thing I think is the fact that you cannot bring in the warlords, mafia leaders, or the corrupt leaders, men, men and women, uh, to discussions and panels and think they have done their job and assign a few uh, millions of dollars uh, to the UN and think, oh, we should feel good about ourselves. No, you created this mess in the 80s, but then again in the 90s, and you're doing it again in the 2020s. So um, 
I think that's the first thing that they need to address and be very okay with the fact that they have created the mess and they need to clean it. And the second thing is don't employ uh, people who ruined it, who were the ones who were part of the problem. Um, from the democratic times, and last but not the least, stop being okay with the Taliban being in power. I know from like from the research that we are doing it for the past 18 months is you guys were okay with negotiations for the past one decade. You've been reaching out to the Taliban. You normalized them. And the least you could do is not normalize their abuse in Afghanistan, not normalize the fact that they are abusing the women of Afghanistan, the people of Afghanistan who don't have a say in them becoming the powerful people that they are right now or the past two decades. Um, so I think the policy has to become very transparent. They have to reflect on what they have done to Afghanistan. And last but not the least, be transparent that just throwing money at it and bringing in a few people to panel discussions won't solve the Afghan crisis. It's going to continue. And it's going to um, later on affect the whole world, if not just the U.S. So, yeah. The Taliban policy is not right. And so the U.S. needs to exert pressure to bring change to its policies, to encourage the Taliban uh, to engage in inclusive uh, governance and respect for women's and girls' rights. The Taliban uh, need to be made to understand that monopoly of power doesn't work and will eventually lead to their downfall. They can't have good governance without the participation of others. And every ethnic group in Afghanistan has a say in the future of Afghanistan. It will make for a better government and a better country and a more peaceful situation for the Taliban if they can understand this. The same way that the Taliban was deprived of running the government for 20 years in the past, when they could have been integrated during the Bonn Conference and it led to disaster, it will eventually collapse again in Afghanistan. U.S. policy needs to recognize its failures in the past on Afghanistan and work to end the cycles of war and violence and cycles of Afghan state collapse. How can the U.S. move towards this? By putting Afghan survival rights at the center of international engagements on Afghanistan and not recognizing the Taliban, engaging with trusted, vetted local stakeholders like WFP, the U.N., and FAO. The other thing is the U.S. should not be a friend of the Taliban, but not let them fall into the arms of um, other regional actors like the Russians and the Chinese, um, which Pakistan is a close ally of China and mentored by them. Um, China in, in Afghanistan currently has uh, taken over um, many mines and has numerous agreements with the Taliban for copper mines, oil, gas, and now lithium. But unfortunately, the Taliban don't have the good skill, talent, and knowledge for mining. So they don't understand how to make use of these mining contracts or get a better deal on them. That's not good for the future of Afghanistan. Uh, the, U the U.S. should do whatever it can uh, not to let Afghanistan's future be shaky. Um, finally, the U.S. is giving money every week to the Taliban so the Afghan currency won't collapse. So the U.S. should exert some influence um, uh, in how the policy of the Taliban is shaped. The U.S. should also keep a closer eye on how that money they're spending every week is being spent, um, in addition to strong monitoring and evaluation mechanisms. Uh, the U.S. can invest in vetted, unpoliticized local informants to act as a kind of follow-up intelligence mechanism uh, to see and make sure that taxpayer money is being spent on the most vulnerable. Ensuring money is spent correctly means being able to send more money for the neediest and most vulnerable people in Afghanistan. Well, I think I, I mentioned that uh, in several other occasions, um, the Taliban should be held accountable. Uh, well, uh, till now, after two years, they haven't, any, they haven't done things which they um, kind of promised or were committed to do part of it. Though they were very, uh, their, their statements were very vague during the Doha process, but at least their, um, their commitment to cut ties with the terrorist groups, their commitment to not use Afghanistan as a sanctuary for the, uh, for the terror groups, their commitment uh, or partial statements about protection of rights, uh, though they mentioned that will be according to Islamic law. 
So, but uh, even their interpretation of Islamic laws uh, uh, is quite different. So, um, I think um, it's a still time. This is the time to the Taliban should be held accountable of what they did and what they did not. Um, and uh, based on that, I think there should be some benchmark indicators of that uh, to, to understand whether the Taliban have uh, uh, performed what they were um, committed to or what they were asked to at some point. Uh, based on that, there should be a policy uh, towards Afghanistan. But overall, I think the focus should be people of Afghanistan. The United States focus should be people of Afghanistan. Uh, Afghanistan overall uh, should not be um, uh, neglected from the policies of the United States. Uh, Afghanistan shouldn't be isolated. Uh, um, that's uh, what I would say. Uh, um, but oh, people need support. Uh, people need support of uh, anything at this point. And there should be an alternative political processes for Afghanistan in order to address some of the political instability crisis that uh, the country is going through. And I think the United States can have a role in that and uh, um, either facilitating, supporting any political process that could uh, uh, ensure inclusivity, that could ensure bringing our parties again together. I know it seems that we're starting everything from scratch, but I think uh, Taliban is not the only reality of, of Afghanistan. It could be one of the realities, but it's not the only reality. There are other groups, parties, people representation are missing from the Taliban. Uh, uh, regime. So I think a process that could ensure that kind of inclusiveness, a, pro a process that could ensure people's um, uh, 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 inspiration into that and people's will into that, I think that's such a process. I would like to see U.S. get involved in such a processes or initiate such a processes. Um, and I think that would be more sustainable rather than relying only on the current regime to bring uh, sustainability, to bring uh, economic development, to bring uh, protect rights and justice, I think that would be uh, not a correct way to, to move on. And, and especially since last two years, we have seen that uh, Taliban haven't changed uh, that much. So uh, that should tell us a lot about their, their, um, their future as well. Therefore, um, another processes that could ensure um, inclusiveness and 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 bringing everyone at the at the, at the table uh, for a for a future for Afghanistan. I think um, that would be good. But again, overall, uh, U.S. engagement with the people of Afghanistan is is necessary and to support people at this particular time. I think that is an important path to go.